Hey everyone, it's William with Scamming Scammers. Uh, I was going to do a Q&A for you guys. Um, a lot of you guys have been asking for me to do a quick Q&A on YouTube versus doing it on Facebook because a lot of you guys said you don't have Facebook pages anymore, which I completely understand. So if you'd like to join, you're welcome to join in. I'll give everybody a few minutes to get into the live uh, chat and we'll start our q and I had some people write in some questions, so I will... Um, answer those questions. And then if you guys have questions in the chat that you'd like to ask about scams or anything or whatever you want to ask me, feel free to do it in the chat. And I'll try to answer as quickly as I can. If I missed your question, just please um, ask it again and I'll try to catch it. It's kind of hard sometimes to read everybody's question and catch them all. So thanks everyone who's joining us for the live Q&A. Um, hi to everyone in the chat. Hope all you guys can hear me okay and we'll get started. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for joining. I hope all of you guys are staying healthy, happy, and um, not losing your minds too much with being in the house. Um, I've been unemployed now for one month and one week. So it's been kind of tough, but um, making it work, doing the best we can, and just trying to stay healthy. And I hope you guys are doing the same. I know it's hard, and I know it's very scary. So I hope all you guys are okay, you're staying healthy, and not losing your minds. So, And I appreciate... Um, those of you that can join us, uh, it's kind of hard with the time zones. I know that a lot of you guys are over in Europe. Some of you are in New Zealand, Australia, a lot of Asian countries, and you're not able to join us because it's early or late. Um, I try to make these Q and A's, you know, at different times to suit everybody, but there's no possible way to do that. So if you're here, I really appreciate it. And, um, I had some people write in with a bunch of questions, so I'll answer those questions as well, but I'll also answer your questions in the chat. So we'll get started. Um, Hi, Little P Scam Bates. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Uh, glad to see everybody. Hi, Monica. Hi, all of my regular people. And I just want to let you know Anne says hi. She's probably watching from her living room, from her phone. But uh, she is um, doing good, and she's on the page working every day and helping everybody out. So if you see her on there, say hello, because she is on there every day. Um, I see one question from Patricia, and it's, uh, tell me about scammers to do with iTunes cards. So, sure, we talk about iTunes cards quite often. Scammers will, using fake profiles, ask you for iTunes cards. You need an iTunes cards. And so um, what happens is you'll be talking to somebody online and they'll say, oh, I need an iTunes card. And it's a fake profile. And this happens a lot. Basically, there's a couple things scammers do with them. Um, for one, they use them to top up their iPhones. Most scammers have really nice phones. So they will use these iTunes cards and top up their phones and they'll, they'll enter the card number in, in their phone and it will go ahead and it'll give them time on their phone for apps. Um, it gives them credit to use apps and different things like that. So, you know, it, it's something that they use quite often and um, they also use them, they sell them. So let's say you give a scammer a um, hundred dollar iTunes card. They can take it online and they can trade it for something else. They can trade it for cash. They can go ahead and um, you know sell it online. There's a lot of things they do with them. So really what we tell people is iTunes cards to a scammer are as good as cash. So if anyone asks you for an iTunes card, block them. It's always going to be a scammer. Uh, normal people don't ask strangers online to buy them iTunes cards. So uh, keep that in mind. Hi, everybody. It's entering the chat. A lot of you guys are, are coming in. My chat is flooding, so I appreciate you guys coming out. Um, it's more people than I thought would be here. Uh, Phyllis, the question you have is, what is Bitcoin used for? So Bitcoin, we, we have a lot of um, scammers that ask for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is virtual currency, so it's kind of hard to explain if um, you've never used a Bitcoin or you don't really know what it is. It's virtual currency, so you think of yourself being online and you have virtual coins. But with the virtual currency, it, it's actual money. So if you have, you know, um, one Bitcoin, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much they're going for right now. They used to be quite a bit, but let's just, just say for the sake of this conversation, one Bitcoin is worth $1,000. Um, you can trade those Bitcoins in on websites that have like chain wallet websites and things like that and trade them in for cash and load them onto your bank account. So a Bitcoin is used for trading currency. Um, it's used as currency online, and a lot of these Bitcoins in these accounts are hard to trace. So scammers prefer to use Bitcoin now more than ever before because, you know, scammers, it's harder for them to go to Western Union and buy, I mean, pick up money. But it's easier for them to get a Bitcoin account through some mule or, you know, using your account and get that money. So that's what it's used for. It's an online currency. 
Um, you know, I've never used Bitcoin. I don't think I ever will. But people do use it to buy things online. It's as good as cash online. It's as good as using a debit card online. And that's why they ask for it. And it's hard to trace. So, um, so you guys have a lot of questions. Um, I've got a few people, as I said, that um, wrote in and asked some questions. So I'm going to read a couple of them um, just to start off. And then I want to cover a couple of topics that have been brought up to me recently. So uh, first question we had was uh, from someone that frequents our um, scamming page. And they said, I've been talking to a man online. He offered to send me an iPhone and a new purse. We've been chatting online for a few months. I told him, yes, thank you, and gave him my address. Now a shipping company has contacted me with a copy of the air bill for the package and says I need to pay $800 in shipping costs for the item. When I told my online boyfriend about this, he became mad and said I must pay for it. Otherwise, the company will charge him with fraud. I contacted the shipping company, and they told me someone is going to bring the box to my house and demand payment. I'm scared, and I don't know what to do. So this is called a what's in the box scam. It's a shipping scam. So what happens is you're talking to somebody online, and they're your online love, and they say, hey, I want to send you some money, some purses, some jewelry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ship it to you. And then the next thing you do is you'll get an email from a shipping company, and they'll send you an air bill. You know, it's a fake document. It looks like a real actual um you know, document, an actual shipping page document. And they'll say, you have to pay $800 for this box. And what happens is victims will pay the money for the box. And then that's it. Scam's over. There is no box. There is no product. There's nothing. Um, what this scammer is doing is he's telling you, you know, someone's going to come to your house. So he's getting desperate. He's trying to scare you into thinking someone's going to come to my house and demand money for this box. Um, keep in mind, there is no box. There is no items. Um, there's no shipping company. It's a fake shipping company. And the scam is that you pay that person and that's it. So um, what I would suggest you do is I suggest you block. You don't talk to them. You don't respond. And you don't respond to the shipping company because there is no box. There is no shipping company. It's the scammer pretending to be the shipping company. So keep that in mind. I Just block them. Don't be scared. Just block. No one's, no one's going to come to your house. So. Hi, Carl. Hi, everybody. Hi, Victoria. You have a question. Do we get to name the scammer we are dealing with? I mean, as, as far as what, I mean, do you get to name the scammer you're dealing with? I mean, if you want to name them, I mean, I mean, if you're asking, do we ever find the scammers sometimes, but um, it's not, it's not very rare. So, uh, you know. but you know, if you want us to look into something, we can, I'm not sure that's what you're asking, but I'll assume it is. So if I'm wrong, just, just like and ask the question again, and I'll answer it for you. Um, so uh, the next thing we had, uh, someone wrote in. Uh, Linda, my question is, how did you get started doing scamming scammers? Hey, that's a good question. I'll answer that for you. So I didn't. Um, how it started was Anne, as you know, who is the page owner of Scamming Scammers, and she owns the channel. I, I just help out. Um, she was talking to a man online. And it was a, you know, typical like romance scam. She was looking, you know, online and she happened to meet this guy and um, they chatted for a while, had an online relationship, spoke on the phone, and then he asked her for money. And so she, instead of sending money, she did a little investigative work and she decided I'm going to, this doesn't sound right. And she got together with some friends and they checked this guy out and they Googled his photos and they found out it was a romance scam. Well, she had never heard of a romance scam. And so she started learning about romance scams. Um, she found out the guy was a scammer. She told him off. He had threatened to kill her. He had never come to her house. He never did nothing to her. Um, he did, however, during the, the courtship, uh, send her flowers. So scammers do send flowers. Um, she went ahead and blocked the guy and everything. And then um, she decided, I'm going to educate people about this. And so she started... Um, scamming scammers on Facebook just to educate people about romance scams because a lot of people didn't know about them. It was kind of a you know, taboo subject. There was a few pages out there, but, um, and she started the, the page and then um, started the YouTube channel scamming scammers, which had a couple videos on it. And it was kind of, kind of a dormant channel. And then uh, I came along and we got together and, and as you know, the rest is history and that's where we've gone from there. And she does most of the, the page, um, the, the inbox and then um, 
I cover the channel. I make all the YouTube videos. So it actually started with her uh, being a romance scam victim, didn't send money, but was emotionally scammed. And she decided to educate people about scams. So that's, that's how we got started, how, how she got started. And then I just kind of came along a year later. So that's, that's kind of how it worked. Uh, a couple questions. Uh, forgive me if I missed some of your questions. Um, Jules, it seems to me that scammers aren't necessarily from Africa, Nigeria, or Ghana. You're right. You're absolutely right. And that's uh, something I was going to cover. I've had, I don't know if it's because everybody's home. I don't know. But I've had people come to the YouTube channel and scream and yell at me that I'm a racist and why do I only post Nigerians and blah, 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 blah. So let's get it straight. No, scammers are not only from Africa. Scammers are not only from Nigeria. They're not only from Ghana. Scammers are from all over the world. All over. There's scammers in every single country, in my country, your country, everywhere. Um, people get this notion and they get this ignorance in their head that they think they're all Nigerian and they're not. They're absolutely not. Here's the issue at hand. If we get 200 inboxes a day from victims and they give us the payment details of a romance scam, they give us the profile, they give us the information. And I hate to say this, but specifically speaking about romance scams, 80%, maybe sometimes 90% of a 200 inbox, the payment details or the real face leads to West Africa. But with that being said, I'm not saying that all scammers are from Nigeria or from West Africa. They're not. But a large majority of the scammers who are from that part of the world specifically do romance scams. They do fake profiles. They do you know military photos and a fake name, fake profile. And they romance people for money and gift cards and things like that. Uh, but no, there's scammers all over. And as I've said before with people, if we were doing a page on credit card skimmer scammers, okay? People that skim credit cards. I would have a ton of people from um, Eastern European countries on there with their faces saying, hey, here's a scammer. Here's a scammer from Romania. Here's one from Bulgaria because that's generally what they do in that part of the world. But unfortunately, in, in places like Nigeria and Ghana, there are a lot of people who, um, that the ones that are scammers, do romance scamming. And that's why a lot of our, our photos and things are of scammers from Africa, because that's where the payment details lead to. It's not because we're targeting a certain demographic of, of, of person. So um, no, they come from all over. They absolutely do. Um, how do I know where a scammer is located from even here in the U S you know what? It's hard to find where scammers are from unless there's a couple, there's a couple ways. And, and this is tough. If you're talking to somebody on Facebook and they are using an American military photo and their name is Bob Smith and their URL, the top, you know, the URL says HTTP Facebook.com is something that's not American. Like it's a Nigerian name or it's an Indian name or it's a, a name, a Thai name. Then you know that that profile originated from that country. Um, a lot of times where we find people, the scammers is through the payment details. We find him, you know, uh, he's an American military guy, but he asked me to send money to Ghana or he asked me to send money to Pakistan. That's how we find out where the scammers are from. And that's the only way we do um, other than their phone number. What's his phone number? Oh, it's plus two, three, three. That's Ghana. So that's where the scammers from. Uh, but we don't always find where they're from. And it can be tough, but those are three ways that you can kind of check to see um, if you do have the, the payment information. Uh what do you guys think if we share the real scammer's name so we can alert ourselves? Thank you. You know, you can. I mean, on our on our Facebook page, we do we do sometimes share the scammer's real name. Like we will put um, fake profile Bob Smith asked money to be sent to Satish Panchel in India. We do that sometimes, um, but unfortunately, the problem with it is there's so many scammers from all over the world that if we were to share all the names, we'd have like, you know, 50 million names. It would be really hard to, to keep track of them. And, you know, some people have the same names too. So it, it can be difficult, but we do, we do expose their names and, and you know, let people know. And, and we do expose their photos when we find them, of course. Uh, okay. Hi everybody. Thanks for your comments. Um, I appreciate it. Um, Tammy had a question. Do military network for talking, do they have access to their money? All military people, I, I, I hate I hate to 
um, see people get scammed with military profiles. Uh, real military <clears throat> men and women, whether they're deployed, whether they're peacekeeping in Syria, or which they're not, or whether they're in Afghanistan, or if they're in Texas, if they're in boot camp, if they're sitting in their apartment, all military, no matter where they are in the world, they have access to their money. They are fed by the military. They get their meals. They get everything they need. And so when you're talking to somebody online and they say that I'm in the military and, uh, oh, I can't, I can't eat because the army is not feeding me and I can't access my bank accounts frozen because I'm in Afghanistan. You're talking to a scammer legit straight out. It's a scammer. Um, real military people always have access to things. So please, if you're ever talking to somebody who says they're in the military and they say they haven't eaten or they can't get to their bank account because it's frozen or, or popular one is they'll say, um, it's frozen due to the mission. I have to complete the mission before I can. It's a scam. It's it's one hundred percent a scam. So um, please don't fall for that. Uh, so a couple of questions. You guys are hitting me with a lot of questions. Um, let's see. Have you had anyone else talk to you or talk about a man named? Gerardo Gabriel, Gabriel Gerardo, he's a bodybuilder and used to be a fitness model, but pretty much went MIA. The name doesn't sound familiar, but if you have the photo and you want to inbox it to me on, on Facebook or on Gmail, I can take a look. Um, I do better with just photos rather than names because we, we go through so many names a, a day. But um, if you want to inbox it, I'll take a look. Hey, and you tried emailing me. Um, our email works. It's scamming scammers at gmail.com. And our email is working because I'm getting like 100 emails a day from people at this point. So give it a try again, scamming scammers at gmail.com. And I'll take a look um, this evening. And, and I have your phone number. I can give you a call. Um, let me know. Uh, Maria, when they work in oil rigs overseas, they don't need money to fix anything. If any of the machinery breaks, correct? Does the company provide all expenses for them and the rigs? Yes, they do. So let's talk about oil rigs real quick. Um, I actually, I've, I've told the story before, but I used to um, have a roommate um, when I lived in Texas. I've, I've been in Texas for 10 years. I lived there and my roommate actually worked for Chevron and he worked on an oil rig and he would fly out for two weeks at a time and he'd come back in. Um, everything's insured. Everything is paid for. If a pipe breaks, a, a part breaks, whatever, those oil rigs are insured for a countless millions of dollars. So if you're, you know, talking to somebody who's working on an oil rig, yes, they're insured. They have money. They have um, the ability to fix the parts. Um, you know, Chevron, whatever oil company they work for, it doesn't have to be Chevron. Um, they have everything covered. And if a part breaks, I actually, like I said, I lived with a gentleman who was, he worked on an oil rig and they had something happen on their oil rig and they had to have the parts flown in. Everything was paid for. Everything's paid for by the company. Parts are shipped in, they're flown in, they're boated in. There's no problem. So um, if someone's talking to you and they're working on an oil rig and they say, oh, my machine broke, I need money. It's a scammer. It's always a scammer. And also guys on oil rigs make really good money. So they don't need your money. They don't need gift cards. They, they have access to their bank account. Um, my housemate, he, he went gone for 14 days at a time. He had access to his bank account because he paid his part of the rent every month, even when he wasn't there. So, yeah, that's definitely a, um, a scammer if, they, if they're telling you that. Let's see. Are there American men that would assist Nigerians in military romance scams for a part of the money that they make? Yes. Um, I, I will say this. Um, I have never in the six years almost that Anna and myself have been doing this. I have never found a military man who would scam with scammers. No, but I have found American men and women who will work as money mules for scammers who will uh, call victims and pretend to be Bob Smith and have that American accent, that American voice and call on behalf of the scammer. And they do it for a cut of the money. Um, I've had money mules that will pick up money for scammers that will open bank accounts. And that, yes, they do live in the United States. There, there's actually one gentleman in Indiana who frequents um, a Yahoo Boys run Facebook group. And he actually puts his information out there and says, I will pick up money for 10%. I will pick up money for 20%. I have three bank accounts. Use my bank accounts. They do. Americans do it. Uh, people all over the world do it. But yeah, there are Americans that will assist scammers for money. Absolutely. Uh 
USSR scammers typically use fake job scams. Right. Well, I'll, say USSR. I'll say Russian, Russian, Russian um, scammers. They do scam and they do a different way. They do job scams. They do um, computer hacking scams, credit card scams. Um, not so much the romance scamming, like fake profiles and stuff. They don't waste their time with that. They go for the bigger bank scams and frauds. Absolutely. And that's, again, there's scammers everywhere. Uh, Julia, who I spoke to said he was called, okay, I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> Lives in West Virginia, but he always asks for a gift card or money, and I should refer him to Italy. Has anyone ever heard of this name? The name, no, but probably the um, the picture he's using. And, and like I said, it comes down to if someone's asking you for money, for gift cards, for any reason, it's a scammer. I mean, look, right now I'm unemployed. I have I have hardly nothing. I'm waiting on unemployment. I still would not go online and ask anybody for gift cards or money. I just wouldn't because I'm not a scammer. So if people are asking for things, then there's something very wrong. And, and, and um, they are a scammer. And it doesn't matter what country they want the money sent to or what their story is. If they're asking you for something like money, gift cards, whatever, it's going to always be a scam. And, and never, never, never doubt yourself with that. So that's uh, hi, everybody. Um, I'm trying to get to all your questions. And this is kind of an informal Q&A. Um, I've had you, you guys have been asking me if I would do one. So I I told them, told everybody I would. Um we don't do them on YouTube very often, but we, we've had better success. So we're going to try to keep doing these on YouTube. Um, question on Instagram, lots of scammers. Yes. Instagram is completely full of scammers. And I hate to say it, but there, we're getting more fake profiles on Instagram than we ever got on Facebook. Um, so yeah, Instagram is just jam packed with them. Tammy, does the military take care of the children if they're sick? Yes. Um, let me say this. People join the military because they get taken care of and their families get taken care of. So what happens when you join the military, you get what's called TRICARE. TRICARE takes care of you, your wife, your kids. You got seven kids. Guess what? They're taken care of as well. They pay for everything. The military pays for you, your family. They take care of you on a, on a level that is unprecedented. And that's why people join the military. Um, so yes. And if you're talking to somebody who is claiming to be in the military and they're telling you, Oh, I can't, you know, I can't pay for little Timmy's surgery and he's going to die. It's a scammer. It's 100% a scammer. The military takes care of their own. Always have, always will. Uh, next question. I'm talking to someone online. He called me his queen, and that is not a phrase used by American people. Yeah, it's not. I mean, I would never call anybody my queen. The only, the only time you hear my queen is when you watch um, 90 Day Fiance and – and Ed calls <laughs> calls Rose Rosemary his queen, but no, my queen is not a typical American saying. It really isn't. Has any one of these scammers used deceased soldiers' pictures and names, and how do they get the information? They do, um, and it's really it's irritating. Um, it's it's you know using anybody, whether it's a soldier or another person or your grandma, um, they do use deceased soldiers' photos. It's easy; they get them online. Everything is online. I mean, you can Google deceased soldiers and bring up Instagrams and old Instagrams and old memorial pages and, and, and you know, news stories. And they take that and they use them. And, and they do. They, they use it to their advantage. Um, I've, I've caught – and Anne has caught tons of scammers using um, deceased soldiers. They've used um, people's dead grandmothers and said, oh, I'm in the hospital, dear. I need you to send me money. It, they do. They do. They have no shame. They don't care who they use. And they do. They do use um, deceased soldiers. Uh, Maria, someone from Nigeria was asking for money to send them money for supplies needed because their government is not providing for them during the lockdown. You know, um, look, Nigeria is a poor country. I mean, there's rich and poor everywhere. There's rich and poor in Nigeria. There's people in Nigeria driving Bentleys. And there's people in Nigeria that are going without food. Um, you know, what you do with your money is, is up to you. And I'm not, I, I'm not a mean person. Like I would never tell somebody, Hey, don't ever send money to Nigeria. You know, screw those people. I would never say that because there are poor people in Nigeria and there, there's good people in Nigeria. There's, there's good people in, and there's poor, good people. You know, um, if someone, it's your discretion, you know, but if someone is being open and honest with you and they're saying, Hey, look, I, I am Nigerian. I'm this, this old and I have nothing. Look at me. This is my house. This is my your FaceTime with me. 
I haven't eaten in three days. You know what? That's your discretion if you want to help them. I'm not, I'm not a bad person where I would tell you never help somebody that's poor, but be careful because there's scammers too. And there's scammers everywhere. There's, I, I live in a, a city where, you know, panhandling is allowed and there's scammers on every street corner. I can go right outside my door right now. And there's panhandlers out here that drive nicer cars than I have. So use your discretion, but you know, at the end of the day, it, it's up to you and you can't hate a country based on what, you know, a handful of people do. And it's true. It's true. Uh, what do I know about SIM card scams? So there's there's a lot of SIM card scams, a lot of things going on with that. Um, what happens is what I've found and what Anna's found is scammers will actually ask to pay your bill with a fake profile. They'll say, hey, do you have Verizon? I want to pay your bill for you. And what they do is they, they pay your bill with either, you know, money that they've stolen from someone's account or, you know, a stolen credit card and they pay your bill. And, you know, as a victim, you give them access to your bank account or your, your Verizon account, excuse me, or your, your phone bill. And they go in there and they order SIM cards and they order stuff from your account and they have it shipped to a, a mule and then they have it shipped on to um, wherever they're at. So um, that's one of the SIM card scams that I know about. You'll have a scammer that's in a place like India that has a phone number from Florida and it's not a free voicemail number. It's an actual real Verizon number. Um, they've obtained a SIM card somehow from a uh, victim. So, I mean, that's kind of the SIM card scams I know about. I'm sure there's a lot, a lot of different ones as well. My friend has been talking to a guy from for three years. He has her send him money. He's supposedly coming home May 1st. It sounds like your friend's being scammed, unfortunately. Um, absolutely. Do families scam? Yes. Um, I, I've caught in a family, caught a family in, um, I forgot where they were from. It wasn't, it wasn't West Africa. It was somewhere else. And the whole family was scamming mommy, daddy, the kids. Oh, it was, it was in South Africa. And a victim had sent uh, like $80,000 and, and jewelry and all these things. And we found the scammers and it was a husband and wife and two kids. And they actually had two kids posing with the victims me. So yeah, families do scam just like any other, any group of, of criminals. There's criminal families. Absolutely. What do I think about people trying to play with scammers knowing that they are scammers. Is it a dumb thing to do? Yes. So, okay, let's talk about it. Um, you want to bait a scammer. You want to play with a scammer. Um, I don't recommend it. And we'll tell you the same thing. I don't recommend doing it. She don't recommend doing it. The reason why is, is this, if, if you're an average everyday person and you don't know how to use your phone very well, and you don't really know how to use a computer too well, other than, you know, you're going on Facebook and Instagram and you message your kids and you start playing with a scammer who has hacking capabilities, who has capabilities to seize your phone, who has capabilities to find out where you're at and, and really screw with you. Um, I don't recommend doing it. I don't. And the reason why is because you don't know who's on the other side of that equation. You don't know who's on the other side, what kind of scammer you're dealing with. And Anna and myself have dealt with scammers that are, you know, stupid and you know young kids and we've dealt with scammers that are million dollar scammers who will wreck your world i had a scammer a couple of years ago and i i'm not a professional like i'm not law enforcement but i am knowledge in computers and phones and, and i have all this security and stuff around my my computer and my identity um i had a scammer find out who i was i had a scammer find out where i worked he got my home phone number he got my my mobile phone number which is unlisted and not even in my name and he started stalking me. So no, I don't recommend playing with scammers. Um, it's it's very scary because you don't know um, who you're dealing with in that dynamic. Unless you you know you're really not what you're doing. But I don't recommend it. What do you do with family family members and friends who are dating? These scammers and refuse to consider they're being scammed. It's tough. You can talk to them. You can try to reason with them. You can show them the fake profile on the dating on, on the scam page and say, "Hey, look, this is your your husband you're talking to online. He's a scammer." Um, at the end of the day, some people have to be scammed before they learn, and it's frustrating. But that's the only thing. You can only do so much, and you can only talk to somebody so much. And if they're going to head for that train, they're going to head for that train. They're not going to listen to you, and it is hard. Um, I recommend talking to them, showing them as much proof as you can, trying to reach through to them. Some of them, people you know that are that are victims are brainwashed. They believe that these scammers are real. They believe the person is real. Um, why do dating sites allow scammers on their sites? I've actually reported many. You know, um, hi everyone. It's coming in the chat. I, I haven't missed you guys saying hi. Um, 
you know what, scammers, dating sites are about money. At the end of the day, it's about how much traffic they can get, how much money they can make through, you know, advertisement and traffic. So if you have a dating site that has 1 million visitors, advertisers are going to pay that dating site lots of money because you have all this traffic. If you have a dating site that's scrutinizing who joins and they only have 100 visitors, they're not going to make money. At the end of the day, it's all about money. Um, but I agree that um, they're not doing enough. Dating sites, social media is not doing enough to, to prevent these scammers, and they should. Uh, what do you think of scammers that expose themselves and want to be your friend? They video chat. They're using you, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> they do. Um, the scammers confess. When it comes down to, I can't get money from you, um, you found out who I am, I'm going to confess. I'm going to video chat as my real self, and then I'm going to tell you this sob story about how I've never scammed before. I really love you. I fell in love with you. I'm a 21-year-old student from India, but I really love you, my 65-year-old girlfriend. They're, they're, they're trying to win you over as themselves because it's a last-ditch effort to try and get money from you. So, you know, block them. Don't friend a scammer because you know what? A criminal is a criminal. A scammer is a scammer. Um, even if they tell you it's the first time they've ever scammed, it's not. It, it, it's not. And it's just, you know, they're confessing to you and talking to you as themselves at the same time they're scamming 15 other women. So they do confess and, and it's not shocking. It's just bullshit, to be honest. It's just a way for them to try to scam you further. Um. How do they get stateside people to help send money to the person in Africa? Long story, but happened to me. Are they in it together? Not necessarily. Um, here's the thing. And, and people, you know, with, with money mules, they don't seem to, it's confusing. So I'll give you an example. This is the best way I can do it. Okay. Let's say Sally in California is dating Bob online. She's never met him. And Bob is a scammer. And Bob is also talking to Janet that lives in Florida as a different profile. And Bob has told Janet, hey, I'm in the army and I need you to send $500 to my, for my leave to the agent in California. Now he's telling that woman in California, honey, my sister in Florida is going to send you some money. Can you pick it up and then go ahead and send it, send it to me because I'm deployed to Nigeria. And that's where you have a money mule. So you have an innocent victim. You have a scammer in the middle. You have an innocent victim who is sending money to another innocent victim who is picking up that money and giving it to the scammer. And it, it creates a chain and it's a money mule. And, that, and that's how a lot of money mules get started. And they're very innocent in what they do. So we've had victims that have said to us, I'm going to go after that, that woman in California who took my money. She's a scammer. She's not. She's a victim. And you'll find most of them are victims. And there are people that, that pick up, like I said, money for scammers. But the majority of them are victims. They're victims of a scammer. And they're being told one story and the other person is being told another. And they're filtering this money back and forth. And we get stories like that all the time. And that's kind of how they do it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, Jennifer, if I send you some pictures of men, can you tell me who they are? I might if you want to send them over. Um, you guys have always asked, how do we get a hold of us? So we're on Facebook under Scamming Scammers Action. If you click message, you'll come to our inbox. You can send the photos there. Um, if you're not on Facebook, scammingscammers at gmail.com. Send an email. Um, I'll answer it as soon as I can. I, I usually work the email. Um, so if you if you do send it, you know, I'll, I'll check it as soon as I can. Uh, keep in mind that between the two of us, we get probably a thousand. Uh, inboxes and emails in a given weekend. So we we try to work as much as we can. Um, with me not working right now because of, of Corona virus, um, I'm on here quite a bit. So um, if you want to send them, I'll, I'll try to take a look and see if I know who the photos are. And we don't always know. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. So uh, thanks everyone. Thanks for the positive comments. I'm just trying to catch up. Um, and I hope I don't miss your guys's. Um, questions. If I do ask them again, I apologize. I'm trying to um, get to everybody. Uh, I'm a caretaker and one of my clients is receiving social security and sending cash to someone in Malaysia. My supervisor said not to get involved. How can I help? That's a, that's a tough question. Um, so I'm assuming you work for like a, like a caregiving place like home instead or one of those. Um, what I would do is, is does this client that you see, do they have family? 
Can you talk to some of the family members? Um, what you could do is if they're sending money through like Western Union or MoneyGram or Walmart to Walmart, you can call those facilities and let them know that, give that person's name and say, they're sending money to scammers and they can put a blacklist on their name. It doesn't always work, but you can do it. Um, you know, with, with employers, it's hard because you can get fired sometimes for the dumbest stuff. Um, but if you're genuinely concerned, I would reach out to the family and let them know what's going on. There's no harm in doing that. And I don't know what country you live in, but legally, you know, you're reaching out to help in your, you're, if you're working with especially somebody that is a senior, you're a victim's advocate. So it is your right to um, report something that is not right. So um, for you to report that to the authorities or report that to the family, um, really you shouldn't get fired for it because you're, you are a senior advocate. So I, I would recommend trying that, try to talk to the family. If not, try to, Find out where the money is going and contact the banks or contact um, whatever wire service this person is using and go from there. Um, so, I mean, it's worth a try. Um, how do they get control of your phone and move things from one account to another? It depends. Um, if you, there's a lot of ways. I mean, Let's say you're talking to somebody online and they give you a video, they click a link, you click a link that they gave you. Um, it could have had malware in it, so they're able to do that. Um, if they sent a code to your phone and you gave them that code, they can use that to log into your accounts and change your information. Um, mostly it's from viruses. Mostly it's from them obtaining your email address and password if you gave it to them or, or if you click the link. That's that's pretty much how they do it. And um you know, if they're able to get into your, your phone, I would recommend running a virus scan, changing every password you have, changing your email passwords, your secret questions, your secret answers, all that. Uh, but that's the only ways I know that they can get in there is either through a virus, a malware virus, or they've gotten access to your account. Uh, hi, Yvonne. I wish I could help you and fight these scammers, but I love the old lady. It's so funny. I hope you can do her again soon. Thank you. Um, I haven't been, let's be honest. I haven't been chatting uh, very much as the old lady um, only because I've been struggling a little bit with this whole COVID-19 thing. I mean, it's scary. I haven't had a really great sense of humor lately in my head to go ahead and pretend to be the old lady. So I've been kind of uh, not going on as much. Um, I think like myself, like everybody else, we're struggling here because, you know, we don't know what the future holds and, and we're taking things day by day. And I've, I've been isolating in the house and it's kind of tough and, uh, you know, not knowing work wise, what's going to happen and things. I haven't been on as much as I should as the old lady, but I, I will come back and, and, and try to uh, get on there. I know my dating profile has like 400 messages, so I, I will come back on and, and be um, Betty pretty soon. So. But I appreciate it. I'm glad you guys like it. Uh, yeah, go ahead and send me the SIM info. info. I appreciate it. Um, I, I'd love to learn more stuff. You know, if I don't know the answer, I, I will always love to learn. So, yeah, go ahead and send it. I appreciate it. I come from Indonesia. Chat with strange men outside my country who happen to be scammer. There's a lot of them, and, and um, it's tough. You know, there's scammers everywhere. There's no, there's nowhere you can go that there's not a scammer. Like I've had people ask me, what dating site can I go to? And, and there really isn't. There's not a, a dating site that's free of scammers. And that was one of the questions asked to me today was, you know, where, where can I go that's scammer free? And there is nowhere to go. Unfortunately, it's just, um, every site has a scammer on it, but you just have to know what to look out for and how to be safe. And that's the way to do it. Um, you know, don't avoid places, just be safe. Uh, it's the same in the UK money mules. It happened to me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. There's, there's, um, there's scammers everywhere and, and, and there's victims everywhere. There's no corner of this world that's not affected by scammers. And it, it's similar to, you know, COVID-19. There's no place in the world that's not affected. It's the same way. There's scammers in every place. If you've been talking to someone for a year and they haven't asked for anything, what is their mission in life? That's a great question. So let's talk about that. Um, we have a lot of victims who will say, I've been talking to this man online for a whole year and he hasn't asked me for nothing. Their mission is they're going to use you for something. So a scammer typically will talk to two, three, sometimes four victims at a time. And you might be victim number four. 
And victim number one is sending the scammer money regularly right now. So they've put you on the back burner and they're going to keep chatting to you. They're going to keep getting to know you and getting to know and trust you. And then they're going to go ahead and ask you for either money or something. Um, I've had victims who talk to people online for five years before um, they were asked for anything. So scammers do build your trust. Um, they build you up. They, they get to know you. They stay on your friends list. They stay your friend. And then they ask for something. They might not ask for money. They might not ask for gift cards. They might ask to uh, send a code to your phone so they can open a, an account under your, your number. They may ask you to pick up money for them. They may ask you to open a bank account. Um, there's a use. And if you know you're talking to somebody and they're suspicious and they check all the boxes for being a scammer, just block them. It's not worth staying a friend with a scammer. Um, but th there's a mission. There, there's, a, there's a use for you and they're trying to figure it out and they will use it against you at some point. So why do they ask for iPhones mostly? Um, you know, why not? iPhones and Apple iTunes cards, they go hand in hand. And scammers really in reality want the best. I've seen scammers that have nicer phones than I have working, you know, 60 hours a week. Um, Apple iPhones are very popular in, in a lot of West African countries uh, as they are all over the world. And so they want the Apple iTunes cards and they want the Apple phones that go with them. Um, they want the best of the best. And it's just a preference. Um, you know, it, it's the same thing like in Ghana, which it sounds crazy, but Toyota Corollas are like the number one car for scammers to own in Ghana. It's just their preference. It's just a preference where, you know, as other countries might not even buy a Toyota. So, but yeah, it's, it's just a preference. Uh, they are sending coronavirus alerts with a link saying that you have been outside. Oh yeah. There are, um, I actually got a text alert the other day on my phone from a scam and it said, you've been outside of your home uh, near people more than six feet. And, you know, please click the link to pay a $500 fine. It's a scam. The government's not um, tracking you that way. And um, depending on what country you're in, I mean, people in, in London, you know, people in the UK, um, you know, they're locked down. And yeah, the police are out asking, hey, what are you doing outside? Are you going for essentials? But they're not going to text your phone and send you a fine. It doesn't work that way. So yeah, be very, very careful of that. Because um, it is happening and people are falling for it. We had two or three victims yesterday in our inbox that, that fell for that type of scam. Uh, <laughs> little piece scam baits 90 percent of toyota corollas in the u.s are abandoned on the southern border <laughs> that's true <laughs> i used to live in texas that's true can they really not buy itunes cards in africa or they depend on us to buy them they can buy them let's talk about that i mean let's see has anyone here ever been to ghana or nigeria so i have friends that go to to go to Accra, Ghana. They go once a year for vacation because they have family there. They have iTunes cards there. They have KFC. They have McDonald's. They have everything we have. But why would they buy one there when they can just get a victim to send them one for free? And that's that's why they ask for them. Um, you know, places in, in, in Africa, I mean, we – I don't know. It depends on where you live. I, I've traveled all over the world. And, you know, there are places in Africa that are really like Africa. It's like, you know, elephants and giraffes and <laughs> the bush. But there are places in Africa like Lagos and Accra, Ghana and, you know, uh, Port Harcourt, Niger Nigeria that are actually like San Francisco. They have a built up city. They have stores. They have all these shops. So um, they just ask for them from us because they they get them for free. That's That's pretty much why they do it. So. Do you think it may be possible to open an agency to capture scammers? No. Um, that's, that's, it would be great. Like, wouldn't it? It would be great if we could open like a, a, a law enforcement agency that just captured scammers. Um, the problem with it is, is jurisdiction scammers are all over and you have scammers, you know, if you're a victim in California and you live in Santa Clara and you know, the person that you sent money to was in San Pili, Nigeria you, you can't go over and get them. Um, there's jurisdictions. And so the EFCC wouldn't let someone like myself go over and capture a scammer. Not that I would, but um, I wish there was a way. I wish there was a way to come up with an agency that would actually go after them and, and work work with all aspects of law enforcement from all over the world. But it's impossible, unfortunately, and, and corruption 
with you know the government and different governments it, it would never have happened but it, it would be awesome if it did it really would but i think you know more than anything it, it would have to be online more the more like an online battle against them more than in person so and you know some agencies do go after them i mean interpol does yes but here's the thing you have Interpol, you have EFCC, you have the FBI, IC3, you have, you know, the London police, you have the UK, you have Inter you have all these different, you know, Scotland Yard, you have all these different agencies from all over the globe. Um, the problem is, is, okay, let's say you live in California and you were scammed by someone in Lagos, Nigeria. So you contact the EFCC. Um, I don't know if you've ever contacted them. They will write back to you, not all the time, but occasionally, and they will say, please upload your documents. Proof of scamming. Please upload all documents. And then you may not hear from them for six months. Um, and some scammers are arrested. They are. You know, we've seen scammers get arrested. We see, you know, these um, news sites where it says 35 Yahoo boys were arrested in Lagos. Great. But it's not all the time. And it's a drop in the hat. So you have 35 Yahoo boys that are arrested in Lagos. Well, guess what? 3,500 more of them are coming back to scam. So... In a sense, they do get arrested, but as a victim, you can't um, depend and expect your scammer to to get arrested. It just it's it's nearly impossible. Affected by a package mule scammer and almost as a money mule, but never as a money mule. Now trying to back down the scammers, they they are elusive. Um, and here's the thing as well: as you have a scammer, you know, let's say that's operating out of um, Bangkok, Thailand who uses um, 25 different money mules from all across the world to, to capture his money. And eventually one of them does send it to Bangkok, but not all of them. Um, it's hard to catch them. Um, they use throwaway cell phones. They use burner phones. They use internet cafes. They use other people's laptops. They, they might be in a room with 40 laptop computers, each one with a different IP, each one with a different VPN. And that's why it's hard to catch them. And they use, they use people. They, they use Bitcoin. They use, you know, it's not the classic scam like it used to be where they just sent the money via Western Union. They're using Cash App and all these apps now, which makes it harder for people to, to law enforcement to capture these guys. Um, but I mean, you know, it's not impossible. It's not impossible, you know, but it, don't expect them to be um, arrested. What are G girls and what is a Yahoo boy? Okay, so Yahoo Boys, it's a term coined by scammers back in the day when we had Yahoo Chat, and they would go on Yahoo Chat, they would try to scam victims. Um, a Yahoo Boy is somebody who scams, who romance scams, scams on the internet. They call them Yahoo Boys. Um, and they, the girls that do it, you know, G-girls and G-boys, usually what, it, what I was told was it originated from Ghana. So the G-boys and G-girls are the same thing as the Nigerian Yahoo Boys. They're scammers. It's, a, it's another you know, term coined for a scammer. So Brenda, I ask your help, please help. How can find William Morgan? He is I'd like to catch him. So William Morgan will, will likely be a made up name by the scammer. Keep in mind that when you're talking to somebody online, everything they tell you about themselves from their birth date to their name, to their children's names is made up. Um, if you want to inbox, um, Inbox us. I can try to take a look um, at what what you have and see what what what's going on. Um, it's hard to just do it with a name. If you have information like the payment details, the the profile links, and the chats and the phone numbers, I'm happy to take a look. If you want to inbox it to me, and I'll Anna or myself will take a look at it. Uh, I'm glad you have the scammers video. I wish there was a place I can send you a lot of scammers of the real Nigerian people that used. Real soldiers pictures. Um, if you have, like I said, and I and I'll say this before, um, if you have information, profile links, proof of scamming, you can inbox us, scamming scammers at Gmail. You can come to Facebook, scamming scammers action, and we're happy to take a look at anything you got. Um, yeah, there are. I mean, there are anti-scam groups and, 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 and agencies in the UK. There are in the city of London. There, there's, there's a lot of agencies. Um, there's a lot of agencies where I live. But unfortunately, what it does is um, they do great work. But um, people that are victims, they instantaneously think they're going to get their scammer arrested. And that's unfortunately not what happens. And it's, it's really sad. It's really, really sad. 
Um, I've been chatting to this woman using a Hong Kong phone number. I'm, I'm assuming HK is Hong Kong on WeChat for a month. And we keep encouraging me to trade gold using MetaTrader 5 app and that she has a good teacher to help me on the trading. It's a scam and WeChat is full of scammers. Um, WeChat is fairly growing and it's full of scammers. So if you're talking to somebody online and they're like a gold buyer, trader, Forex trader, I can make you a million dollars for 500 bucks. It's a scam. Um, I would be very leery of that. Um, people that promise that they can make you millions of dollars for a little, little amount of money, a little deposit, it's always, always going to be a scam. So I would be very, very cautious of that. Um, and no matter where their phone number comes from, at the end of the day, it comes down to what they're telling you and what they're asking of you. So if you're talking to somebody and they have a German phone number, but they're asking for money to be sent to somewhere else, it's a scam. If a scammer confesses, is it really the truth they say to you about the kid's family or is it another lie? It depends. Um, you know what? Uh, I had a scammer confess to me and he told me he, he is a single father with a little baby. And I said, well, where's the baby's mother? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm a single father raising a, I think he said it was like a six month old baby. I said, where's the mother? And he, he told me, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm poor Nigerian single father. And I found his real social media page. And guess what? He has a baby, but he's also married. And he has three other kids. And they had a, a Range Rover. They had a really nice car. And so they do. They do they do lie when they confess. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's hard to know sometimes. Uh, Myrtle, why do you believe that someone can love you online? In less than a week, you will hear the words, I love you. Would you call it emotional manipulation? Yes. So... <laughs> People, I don't know, people get nasty with me and they go, you know, all these victims are stupid because they fell in love, you know, fell in love online because they heard I love you. Well, you know what? You can't judge because what if that person, that victim, you know, has been alone or abused or hasn't heard somebody actually say the words I love you to them in 25 years or have never heard it. And you have someone that comes into their life that suddenly says, hey, I love you. It's emotional manipulation. And some people, you know, I had a lady, um, our, one of our page regulars, Kim, had, had written today and she had said, scammers fill your void. So if your void is not hearing I love you or not hearing I care about you, scammers will fill that void. And so they tell us things that we want to hear that we don't hear. You know, um, it, the same goes for guys, too. Like, you know, if you don't hear, hey, you're really handsome. And, and, a, and a beautiful woman says that to you, and you're going to be affected by that. It's the same thing with, with, with women who get scammed. And the man says, I care about you, honey. How are you today? I really love you. And you haven't heard that, or you haven't heard you're beautiful in 20 years. It's going to affect you. And that's what scammers do. And they know that. They absolutely know that. And there's no shame in being craving that human contact. But scammers hone in on that, and they, they affect you emotionally. Absolutely. Uh, can you help me to check somebody trying to scam me? He said he's a doctor in Yemen and he said he needs a, needs to pay for code to the bank to release his money. It's a scammer. Um, doctors in Yemen are, are fake. Um, especially ones on the internet asking for help with money. It'll definitely be a scam, but I'm happy to take a look at who you're talking to. If you want to inbox it, I, I will look at it or Anna will look at it and we'll, we'll determine, but I can tell you right now it's, it's definitely a scam. Definitely a scam. I called a scammer number today, a Nigerian man. It sounded like he was at a party answered. <laughs> the call dropped, so I texted the line was bad and couldn't hear him. He texted, hello, I'm William, and I'd like to show if you can handle brochures and logo design for my company. Kindly get back to me so I can send you the full details. Huh, that's a new one. Interesting. He probably was at a party or a get-together, you know. Um it's, it's funny. I, I've had scammers, you know, we, we get used to the, um, we get used to, hang on, I just got to ban somebody from this page. Um, we get used to people, you know, scammers saying things like, um, I'm an oil rig worker, I'm a doctor, I'm an army guy, I'm, you know, these kind of things. But scammers are, are using different things now. I had one tell me he was an interior designer. I've had, you know, scammers tell me that their profession is a cabinet maker. I've had them tell me all, all kinds of different, they're coming up with new ideas. So it doesn't surprise me. It really doesn't. Um, but I, I, had, I had a scammer one time tell me he wanted to redesign my kitchen. 
And I said, oh, sure. You know, how much is it? And he asked for like $50,000, you know? <laughs> so they do, they, they come up with a lot of different, um, different excuses. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> People like my tattoos. I, I have a lot of tattoos. I just, I try to hide them usually. Um, can someone send malware in these fake emails? Yeah. They can code um, malware into fake emails and, and you know spam emails. They can they can put codes on it. That's why I always say to people, don't ever open something that you don't know who it's from. You know, I get thousand emails a week on our on our scam page, and some of them I don't open because I know they're viruses. I check them, and and yeah, they can send malware. They can also send it as a photo as an attachment. So be very very careful with who you um, open open emails from. Absolutely. Happy new month. Happy Sunday. They use the word M. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, you know, it's it's a different world. I mean, it depends on where the scammer's from, but you have scammers that, you know, um, will say happy new month. I'm from California. Happy new month. <laughs> you know, happy Sunday. <laughs> and um, you'll have scammers that'll, you know, M from the state, M from M from Texas, M from the state, but M in Nigeria, uh, M peacekeeping, M in Syria. You know, it's a different world. It's a different language. Um, and that's some of the red flags. You know, if you're an American and you're reading something from someone who is also American and it doesn't look right, then it's probably wrong. Uh, but yeah, definitely. Some small scammers befriend you and once they know you well, they give you their sob story. Yep, they do. They do. They absolutely do. Any scammers in Atlanta, Georgia, widow with a grandchild and a nanny to care for. He worked as a petroleum engineer working in Spain, but got caught, needs money, landed in jail. What's with that? Well, they won't be from Atlanta. It's just, they just pick where they're from. They say, you know, my name is, you know, Bob Smith and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and I'm working in Spain and I'm trapped on an oil rig. Um, that comes down to keep in mind that no matter what someone tells you with a fake profile, it's bullshit. So, you know, if a fake profile is saying, my name is Bob Smith, I'm 57 years old, I was born in blah, 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 and um, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have a house on Peachtree Street, and I have this and this, and my daughter's name is Mandy, and my son's name is Trevor, and my wife's name was Barbara, and she died of breast cancer, that's all lies. So, so you know, think of it that way. It's all, it's all crap. None of that is true. They're playing a part. They're playing a role, and that's that's why they're they're saying it. So, you know, we've had victims that have come and said, "Oh, he says he's from Atlanta, and he works at the petroleum company." I know, I know where he's at. You don't know where he's at. That's all. It's all lies. It's all definitely lies. So just remember that. How about those who use "I'm" instead of "I am"? Yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, I use "I'm." I'm going to the store, but it depends on the English, you know. The majority of people have a grasp of the English language that speak English, so they're not going to stay. Like, oh, you know, let's say I, I've lived in this country most of my life, and um, I don't say I'm from the state. No, I say I'm from wherever, you know, wherever I'm from. Um, so that it's a red flag. You know, at the end of the day, it, it comes down to what they're saying to you. So, I mean, if they're saying to you, uh, I'm from the state, dear. I was raised in Spain by a Polish mother and a German father. I went to boarding school in Taiwan um, and I grew up in Italy. And something's wrong, you know, and they're using that as an excuse. So when you actually do phone chat with them and you hear that accent, you're like, oh, I don't recognize that accent. You know, scammers will turn around and say, oh, well, I was raised in Italy by a Swedish mother who also spoke Spanish, but then I went to school in Thailand and that's, they're trying to mask their accent. And that's, that's why. So, and yeah, spelling errors too. I mean, if you get an email and here's another thing too, if you're talking to somebody online, you're talking to someone you met on, on a dating site and they want to email you. Like I always, when I play as Betty, I always tell them who the hell uses email. I, I don't use email anymore. I text with people, but um, you know, if they want to email you and then they email you this, this like grandiose story of, you know, hello, dear. I'm the, I'm the last surviving child of my parent who both die am from the state am living in, you know, Texas city, Texas, but I'm currently in Malaysia am originally from Spain, you know, and they go on to this long story about their life. Normal people don't do that. I mean, I love to talk to people. I love to meet people. 
but I don't tell them my life story in the first five minutes I talk to them. And, and if, if, you know, you're talking to somebody online, even if you're not emailing, you're talking to somebody online and they say to you, hello, dear, nice to meet you. My wife died five years ago from breast cancer and she leaves me with my only child. Her name is Barbara and she is three years old and I'm 75 and people don't do that. People don't tell you their whole life story in the course of one chat, you know, uh, normal people don't do that. I can, I've talked to friends online for months or years and they don't still don't know my whole life story. They, people don't overshare scammers overshare, um, with their fake profiles because they're trying to look legit and look real. Look dear, I've told you all about me. It's kind of weird. So yeah, I mean, if you're talking to somebody online and they're, you know, telling you these, these, you know, really drawn out stories about their life and all this stuff that they've done, it's, it's a red flag. It's definitely a red flag. What is the safest way to chat with new people? Great question. Because we do like to meet people online and, and online's a great place to meet friends. I mean, most of my friends I've met from the internet and I've met them in person, but I've met them online. Um, the best way to do it is, you know, talk to somebody. You don't have to friend a person to, to talk to them. So let's say you're on Facebook and someone sends you a message and you're not friends. Chat to them. Just chat to them. Don't friend them. Just chat to them and see what they say. And so while you're chatting with them, check their profile out, check the red flags. Like, what are they saying to you? Are they telling you this bullshit story that they're an engineer on an oil rig and then, you know, they're fake. And, and just keep in mind that, you know, if you're talking to somebody online and they want you to email right away, they want your email address. They want you to go to Hangouts. They want you to go to WhatsApp. They want you to go to Kick. Something's wrong with that. And if a person cannot talk to you on the site that they met you on, See it as a red flag and say, hey, if you want to get to know me, you talk to me here or no, nowhere. And a scammer usually will go away because I'll go, oh, okay, and then they disappear. They'll say, I'm not on the site all the time, dear. Yeah, you are. Talk to me here or hit the road. And that's, that's what you got to tell people. I mean, you may come across as rude, but I would rather somebody be rude with me straight up than, than to just, you know, string me along and go, oh, well, let's talk on the off the site, dear. So, yeah, you know, why not? That's, that's the best way. I mean, just be straight with people and, and you got to be rude. And you know what? People get mad at me because I tell them, demand a video chat. Oh, no, I don't want to upset them. Why? You're going to marry this man that you met on the internet, but you're not going to demand he video chat with you and write your name on paper and hold it up? Well, no, I don't want to upset him. Screw it. Upset him. Ask him for that. A real person. Like myself, if you if you ask me to write your name on paper and hold it up so that you know I'm real and we can continue with our relationship, yeah, I'm going to do it for you. A scammer won't. A scammer will not. On Instagram, we have direct messengers. So why scammers insist on Hangout or WhatsApp? That's a great question. This is why. So you have a scammer who created a fake profile on Instagram or on Facebook, and he's messaging you. Um, if it's a newer profile and people – you know, like scam, scam hunters and people that see that it's a fake will post it on pages and then that profile will get removed. However, if they get you on hangout and they get you on um, WhatsApp, even if they lose their fake profile, they still have you. And so that's why they do it. They try to get you off that site and get you into their clutches because it's harder to get kicked off WhatsApp and, and hangouts than it is off of Facebook. So that, that's, that's why they do it. They want to they catch you, capture you on there, and then they can keep all their victims on that one chat app. They take you away from a dating site. Absolutely. Absolutely. How can we check if it's fake or not the people who are we deal with? I mean, there's a lot of ways to check. You know, um, you know, check the red flags. We have we have notes on our Facebook page, Scammy Scammers Action, that gives you step by step instructions on how to check to see if a profile is real or not, and that's that's the best way to do it. Um, it's easy once you know what to do, um, and those step by step instructions will, will probably help you if you're on there. You can you can find our notes section. Um, what about insisting on getting Skype? Sure, Skype or I mean, look, I, I got a phone. I've got, I've got um, uh, apps on my phone. I've got Facebook. I've got WhatsApp installed. I've got all these different, I've got duo. I've got things installed on here that I've never used. Um, there's tons of ways to video chat. So what I would do is, yeah, you want to get Skype. Hey, let's Skype. Okay. Let's Skype. A real person is going to Skype and video chat with you right away. A scammer is going to tell you, I dropped my phone in the river and it doesn't work. 
If no one will video, if they won't video chat with you, it's a scammer. It's absolutely a scammer. There's no reason why people can't video chat unless they're they're a scammer or they're not who they are in the photo. But most people should and will video chat with you. And you know, if someone wants to get to know you and romance you and marry you, they're gonna video chat with you straight out, you know. Uh Brenda. If you want to inbox all that information, Anna or myself can help you um, take a look at that number and we'll investigate it for you. We'd be happy to do it um, and, and see what's going on. Uh, I found a scammer recently. He gave me his email and I found his IP address it was from Nigeria. Yeah, I had a feeling. Sometimes the IP will lead you to where they're from. It depends. Um, you know, a lot of times too, if they use Gmail, it'll come out as Mountain View, California, because that's where Gmail is located. So that's why a lot of them use Gmail, because when you try to check their IP, most of the time you get California for it. It doesn't mean the scammers in California, it just means they're using Gmail. But Hangout is full of scammers. And you know what? You can video call on Hangout. So, I mean, if, it, that's the thing. We live in a world that, um, you know, we live in a world where we have video chat everywhere. I'm, I'm sitting at my desk and I have three cameras right now. I have one on my phone, one on my laptop, and one on, one on my computer. We can video chat. We live in a world we can video chat. If you, if you dropped your phone in the river tomorrow, you still have a way to video chat. You can get on, on a laptop. You can go to the library. You can go anywhere to video chat. I mean, if someone won't video chat, there's something wrong. Um, you can check IPs. You know what? You can you can check them off of an email, but the majority of the time you're going to come back with California Forum because that's where all the Yahoo, Microsoft, and um, Gmail is located. It's really hard to trace an IP, and even if you traced it and you traced it right to the scammer's house, there wasn't much. There's nothing that'll happen. You can't arrest them. You know. Do scammers think that you're gullible, or do they think that they are good at taking advantage of people? Is it in their mindset? It depends, it's, you know, depends on scammer. I've had scammers that have been just outright, you know, ballsy and say, hey, I know I can scam anybody I see. And there's some scammers that, you know, it's it's an act and it's an art form for them. And they're they're honing in on what what who you are before they do it. They'll so they'll talk to you and they'll get to know you and they'll say, Oh, oh, your oh, your kids are grown. They'll ask you questions like, Do you live alone? Oh, you live alone. Uh, where's your kids? Oh, your kids are in another state. Oh, you must be so lonely. You live all by yourself. And you know, how do you manage? Don't you get lonely? When's the last time you've dated a man? And they ask you these questions so they can size you up to see what what void they're going to fill for you to try and try and get into your good graces. So yeah, they do. They, I mean, it's it's a manipulation, uh, but every scammer is different. Everyone's different. You know what I do? Ask them to go on cam. They say that I can't on my phone or they say, hold on. And if anyone can go on cam, watch the glitch. And, and that's the thing. Um, okay. You, you can video chat with fake profiles. So they'll have, they'll have stolen video that they're using the, a stolen photo. And they also have stolen video of the same person. Um, they will use that video and they'll play it for you. And so you'll see a video like myself sitting at a desk and the, and then the video will cut off and someone will tell me, no, I video chatted with them. And I'll say, did you ask them to write your name on paper and, and hold it up like this while you're talking to them? And they say, no, do it and see what happens. It won't. The video will cut off and he'll say, oh, my camera's broken, dear. So, I mean, that's that even though you get a video chat, you really want to um, push for them to do something. Tell them to pat themselves on the back. Tell them to raise their both arms up and shake them up and down. If they do it while on video at your command, then then you know you're talking to that person. But if they're just sitting like this, no, it's, it's a recording. It's absolutely a recording. Uh, how do they get a free Google phone number? Easy, easy, easy. Anybody can have a phone number. So you go to gmail.com, you sign up for an email address, and then you go ahead and click. Um, there's a, there's a, you can Google it, or I think it comes down in the pull down bar. Um, it'll say, um, get my phone number, or Google voice phone, click on it, box pops up, pick an area code where you want to be from. I want to be from Montana. Okay. Pop, 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 406. There you go. There's your phone number. It generates a phone number. And so when you're logged into Gmail, you have a little box that will say Google phone, Google voice, and you use it and can make a phone call. The same thing with text now. 
text now is a free I, I have five text now numbers that I use to bait scammers with uh, you go to textnow.com you sign up with a free email you put that email in put your name in whatever name you want it to be you could be Barry Manilow if you wanted to pick a state pick an area code and it generates you a phone number you call people from that phone number it comes up with that area code and that number it's very very easy unfortunately how do they keep victims isolated? It's like they're programmed not to trust us when it's a scammer that's fake. Absolutely. So it's a good question. How do they keep you isolated? So there's a couple ways. A scammer will size you up and ask you, do you live alone? Yeah, I live alone. Oh, you live alone. Okay. Um, if you don't live alone, well, who lives with you? My son. Oh, well, when is he there? Oh, he's here. Um, you know, he's he works Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Oh, okay. So the scammer will call you Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. They isolate you by figuring out who you are, what your living situation is, and then they'll tell you, you know what? Let's be in a relationship, but don't tell your family because I want to surprise them when I show up after my deployment and we'll, we'll profess our love to each other when I show up. And so that's what they do. And they isolate you and they want you to keep the relationship secret because they want to make it a big surprise. And that's how they isolate you. They tell you not to tell your friends, your family. Don't tell your kids. It's none of their business. We're, we're adults. And that's that's how they do it. They, they do. And they do isolate victims really easily. They do it all quite often. How do you check an IP address where they're chatting from? Um, it's hard because... Oh, hi, Linda. I realize you. Um, it's hard. Um, how do you know if they're using an application to change their voice? Okay. So first question, IP addresses. It's really hard sometimes. Sometimes you can pull the IP address off of an email. Um, when you get an email from a scammer, you can click read the email and click full header, and it'll bring up the IP address. You can run it through an IP checking site, but most of the time when they use Gmail, Yahoo, it's going to come back to California. Um, so it's not a solid way to check. Um, it's hard to check IPs. And a lot of times scammers use routers, they use VPNs, they use different ways. And, and you could be chatting with a scammer from, you know, India, and their IP comes out of China. They, they bounce around and it's really hard to track them. Uh, your second question, how do you know they're using an application to change their voice from heavy African to American? That's a good question. So if you guys have watched our latest video we made a, about a week or so ago, <clears throat> there's an app called, I think it's called All American Voice or something stupid. And the app will basically, you can talk into the app and say, hello, my name is Bob Smith. And then you press a button and that app will actually take your accent and make it American. So if you, let's say you're from, you know, I don't know, let's say you're from London and you have a British accent, you can talk into that and it'll, it'll come out with a robotic-ish sounding accent. It's hard to tell if you haven't listened to a lot of them, but basically when you hear it, you know, you know, okay, if I'm talking to you and I say, hello, my name is Bob Smith. When you put it through the app and they play it, it kind of sounds like, um, hello, my name is Bob Smith. I am American. There's a little bit of a delay in it, um, but scammers are fooling people with them. And I mean, that's, that's kind of a way you can tell. Just listen carefully. If you hear a lot of crackling and background noise and different, it, there's something off. Um, how do you manage to get the URL? It's at the top of every Facebook. Every Facebook has a URL. And if you're on a computer, um, if you go to the profile, the toolbar at the top, it'll say http.facebook.com slash whatever. That's the URL. If you're on a phone, go to the, the profile, and there's three dots next to where you can message a person. Click on the dots, and it should bring up the URL. It does for mine. I have an Android phone. Um, that's the way to look at it. So be careful. Let's say you're talking to somebody, and their name is Tom Jones. And you go to their Facebook page, and their URL is facebook.com slash Lagos. You're talking to a scammer in Nigeria. Um, or if their URL is, you know, Sunday Promise. But their name on their Facebook page is, you know, Bob Jones. You're talking to a scammer who has a Nigerian name. Um, so that's a good way to tell. Um, Brenda, if you need help, you can inbox us. I'm happy to help you. Anna and myself are both happy to, to help you. Do men, do military men ever be deployed for years to Nigeria? No. And we don't have U.S. military deployed to Nigeria right now doing any kind of peacekeeping or any of that bullshit. 
Um, no. And people generally don't stay deployed for four years. That's, it's not, you know, deployment can last a long time. I mean, we have a, a, a gal that was in the military that was in Afghanistan and she does a lot of our advisors for our page and she was deployed for 15 months to Afghanistan. But you don't get deployed for four, five, six years. Same with an oil rig. You don't sit on an oil rig for two years. It doesn't work that way. So no, and there there are no troops peacekeeping or doing anything in Nigeria. So you're talking to a scammer in Nigeria. Um, you're welcome, Myrtle. I'm glad you guys enjoy the page. I mean, um, Brenda, if you I, I can take a look if if you want to inbox scammy scammers at gmail.com or Facebook scammy scammers action, inbox me and Ann and we'll we'll take a look. I promise. Uh, why do scammers feel like they have to tell you their life story within 10 minutes when playing words with friends? They do, don't they? They do. Um, let me just ban this person one second. Um, they do. Um, the thing of it is, is most normal people will, um, you know, chat with you when playing a game. I used to play online on pogo.com many years ago. I was on there quite a bit. And um, I would chat with people on there say, hey, good game. Uh, where are you from? Oh, from Texas. Oh, me too. Or whatever. And that was the extent of the conversation. Um, scammers are trying to distract you and they're, 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 they're treating words with friends and you know, these Scrabble games like a dating site. And so if you're talking to someone who's playing a game, most people that play games online are playing the game. They want to get the right word or the right number or whatever. Scammers don't care. They use, they use cheating apps to play those games, too, um, that generate them the, the, the answers. So they want to chat. And, and so, you know, if you're talking to somebody online, and it's not always everybody, but it's a lot of people um, that, you know, scammers, they're playing games with you, and they start talking about their dead wife and their tiny child over in UK boarding school. It's a scam. Just leave the game. Leave the game. Uh... And I am, I am moderating comments on here. I just, sometimes I miss some of them. Um, normally, where should victims report their scamming experience with? How do they prevent them from coming back without having to change your number? It's hard. Um, think of it as um, scammers, hold on one second. So scammers, um, they come back. So let's say you've been a victim of a scam and you found out and you blocked the scammer. You did the right thing. You blocked them on your phone. You blocked them on WhatsApp. You blocked his email. You blocked his Facebook profile, but you come back. You come back as uh, a different name or he comes back as the same name. It can be hard. Um, it can be very hard because what happens is scammers will, some of them don't go away easily. So if you block them, they'll come back as themselves. They'll all sometimes come back as another fake profile. They'll come back as, you know, a new person and they'll harass you. And it's because they've spent a lot of time trying to talk to you and they keep, you know, wanting to harass you and wanting to get to know, you know, what, why you blocked them and they're trying to worm their way back in. Um, it can be really hard. Um, I mean, you can report the fake profile, um, if you're like a victim of a scam, depending on the country you're in, you can always, you know, file a, a report if you've lost money. Um, but if it comes to the point where, you know, they're calling you constantly from different phone numbers, keep in mind, scammers share your information with other scammers. So you may get 25 other scammers trying to have a crack at you. Um, you may have to change your phone number. You know, you might have to change your phone number. You might have to um, change your email. And, you know, if your social media profile, change your name around. And if your name is, you know, Linda Smith, change it to your middle and your first name, Linda Diane or whatever it is. And, and, and change your photo, change your photo, put something else up. And hopefully it kind of detours scammers. And the more that you block them, the more they'll, they'll actually just give up at some point. But it can be tough. It can take, you know, a couple months for them to just go away. But it's, it is tough. It is tough. They do come back as a different person, same character. They do. They do. Or, you know, different different name, different whatever. But they do. They tend to say they're real. Um, you know, they try everything. And the problem with it is, is they'll, they'll come back and, and they'll confess or they'll say, I too was a victim of a scam. And they try to everything in desperation. They really do. They try all they can do. Uh What's your question? What age group or demographic do you guys hear getting scammed the most? My aunt was not older. 
and doesn't make a lot of money, but was still scamming. So in all the years that Anna and myself have been doing this, and I, I get yelled at by the people when I say this, um, the majority of our victims from the inbox are between the ages of 35 and 60. The large majority of them are women in their, between 40 and 55. Um, the most of them, I mean, they're from all around the world. So I'm not saying all women from this age group are victims. I'm saying a large majority of them are who come to our inbox. Um, they're from all over the world. They're from Thailand. They're from Malaysia. They're from the U.S., Australia, New Zealand, Serbia. I've had a lot of victims from Serbia lately, um, you know. But the majority that I've seen that come to our inbox are women in that age group, you know, I'd say 40 to 55. They're divorced. Their husbands were a piece of shit. Excuse my language. They're divorced. Um, they're lonely. They, their kids are grown or their kids are nearly grown. And so they went online looking for love and looking for a second shot at love in their life. And that's where a lot of our victims come from. Um, the next age group, <clears throat> I'd say, our younger, um, we have people in their 20s that are that are victims, and then we have a lot of elderly people that are victims that are you know 75, 85, 90. I've had a victim that was 95 years old come to the inbox the other day, um, and she got scammed. Um, so, but yeah, the majority of them are, are women who are in the you know 40ish to 50ish age group, um, and who are divorced or whose you know husbands have left them and they've they've had a shattered marriage, and and there's a lot of bad guys in the world and people divorce and. Um, they go online looking for love. And so that's, that's the majority of our age group, unfortunately. And I think, you know, it's sad because, you know, <clears throat> scammers know that, you know, if they talk to you and you say to them, well, um, I was married for 20 years and my husband was very abusive and he never paid attention to me and he hated, hated our child and our son has grown now. And, you know, I'm 50 years old or whatever, and I'm divorced and, and I'm, I'm wanting love. And so the scammers know that and they say, oh, okay, well, dear, I think you're beautiful. I'm going to send you flowers. I'm going to just, you know, shower you with love so I can get your money. And so like, again, this comes down to they fill the void. They're filling that void of what you didn't have while you were married or while you were in a relationship. And that, and it's, it's, it's messed up, but that's what they do. You know, they take advantage of you. Absolutely. They take advantage of you in any way they can get it. You know, um, I do wish dating sites had verification too. Um, the only site, you know what I'll give props to, um, is Badu now. Badu is full of scammers, but Badu now requires you because I tried to open a fake profile to bait scammers with Badu. Um, they will give you one week and then after a week now they're asking you to verify yourself by writing your username on paper and holding it next to your face. And they're making it match. And I think that's a great way to verify. I think a lot of, a lot of sites should do it. I really do. I think it's a great way to, to verify people. Um, but yeah, you know, and, and it's, there's gotta be ways. There has to be, there has to be, but um, also to, to address uh, someone was, like I said, I don't know if it's because, people are home all day now or what, but I've had some really nasty people on YouTube lately. And I had one person write yesterday and said, I hate your stories. They all sound fake. They're made up. They're all the same. And, you know, my response to that is most scammers say the same crap to the same people. Like it's, it's always, I'm an oil rig. I'm an engineer. I'm this, I'm this, I'm this. And so, you know, all our stories that I read that I narrate are verified. We have people write them in, we verify them and then we, we narrate them. Um, but unfortunately people are getting nasty with me saying, you know, it's all the same. Well, it is all the same. Scammers go by the same motive, you know, all the time. It's always the same. Um, you know, and you, you have to remember that you, you know, and I've had, um, a few people write their stories in the last couple of days that I'm going to publish them. And, 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 you know, it, it's always the same. It's always the same motive. It's always they're always needing money, gift cards, bank accounts, and and unfortunately, all the victims have the same situation a lot of times. And, and it comes down to demographics as well. A lot, of, like I said, a lot of our victims are divorced ladies, or or ladies that are you know in a marriage that is pretty much um, 
you know, shattered and it's not going to be repairable. And a lot of people stay married for the sake of their children and their finances, but they're not married. And so a lot of our victims are, are like that. And, um, you know, the stories are always the same, you know, and it's unfortunate, but, <clears throat> you know, it, it's the way it is. So, but uh, I just wanted to address that. I had, I've had some really nasty people on YouTube, um, you know, saying things. They make you feel bad for them. Yeah, they do. Um, and, and especially with a fake profile, if you're talking to somebody online and, you know, they say to you, I need money for my broken oil rig part. And you say, screw you. Um, they go, well, now you've ruined my career. You've ruined everything. That comes down to emotional manipulation. They're trying to make you feel bad. It's the same when they tell you that, you know, um, their child needs surgery and they need, you know, $5,000 and you tell them, I don't have that money. They'll say, well, the child will die now. It's, it's a game. It's a, it's a mental, you know, war with them. And they're, they're trying to tell you these things. And it's, it's just a game. It's just a game. Mary, marriage is a two way street. One cannot go one way or another. It takes either of you to make it or you don't. That's true. And, you know, um, thank you for the comments on the videos. Um, it is. And, and, and you know what? We don't judge like Anna and myself. We get, we get victims from all over the world that have all different kinds of stories. I've helped women that are married, you know, that say I, I did, I cheated on my husband online. Um, but he, my husband's horrible. I'm not here to judge you. That's, that's your, your life. You know, I'm just here to help you. And you have to remember that everyone, everyone has a different life story. All of us have, have our issues, you know, uh, thanks unicorns. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you guys um, and you being in there. Um, and thank, thanks for everyone that's come to the, the Q&A. I really appreciate it. There's more people in here than I thought there would be. So They love to come to you for help uh, yeah, as your potential lover, which real men don't do. True. And, and look, I mean, I, I'm a little old school, and, and I think that I take care of myself. So you know what, if I don't have money for my phone, well, then I'll have to go find a second job. I would never ask somebody, bye. I would never ask somebody, especially a woman online that I was dating for money for something. It's I'm just not that way. Um, and most men aren't. You know, there's, there's some that are losers and that would take money from, from people. But um, no, I mean, you take care of yourself. You know, you, you take care of your own, you take care of your life, you take care of your bills. Nobody pays your bills for you. You pay your own. And that's the way it should be. You know, it's, um, it's just, it's just the way it is. You know, um, like I said, right now, my situation with, with COVID-19, uh, Hey, I have no income. I have no income coming in. I'm living off of what I have in savings and I don't know when I'm going to go back to work. And I, I still pay my bills. I still take care of myself. I don't go online and ask people for money. I wouldn't, you just don't do that. You just take care of yourself. And if you go without something, well, you go without something. Uh, but scammers think, you know, we owe them everything. And it's not that way. It's just not that way. Money bill, don't give out your bank account to someone you've never met. And careful, you might end up being an agent or nanny. Here's the thing, and I don't understand why people do this. Um, don't give your bank account information to people you've never met. I have so many victims, Anna and myself both, in the inbox that say, well, I didn't give them money, but I gave them my bank account information. Why? It comes down to, let's talk about like if you're, if you're at a grocery store and you're standing in line and the guy behind you taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, my name is Bob. I'm a widow with three kids and I'm an oil rig engineer. Can I have your bank account information? You wouldn't give it to him. The same thing goes for online. You don't give people your bank account. You don't give them your social security number. You don't give them a copy of your passport. You don't give them, you know, your driver's license. You just don't do it. You got to treat online like real life. And, you know, you don't, you don't give people your personal information. Like I have, like I said, I've had friends online that I've actually met in person that I went and met them. And they still don't know my social security number. They still don't know my passport photo. They still don't have that information. So, you know, don't get comfortable with someone because it's online because it's, it's less safe online than, it, you know, it, you just don't do it. And, and too many people do it. They do use your bank account as a money mule and they tell their victims you are an aunt. They do, Linda, they do. Um, so a lot of times like this comes down to scammers using victims. So 
scammer A over here is talking to two different people and they're saying to one victim, oh, send the money to the nanny. And so this victim sends money to the nanny. And then, um, you know, the scammer tells the other victim, my special agent from the military is sending you money, dear. And so that's, it's a chain. It's how money mills work. And unfortunately it does. Uh, don't do sexy pictures. No, don't do sexy pictures. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you guys watch 90 Day Fiance. Um, Yolanda sent sexy pictures and now she's being, you know, sex torsion scammed. No, don't send sexy pictures. I don't care if you're dating somebody online. You just don't do that. You don't send sexy photos. You don't send naked photos. You know, you tell people, well, you're going to be with me. You'll see me then, you know, and that's how you do it. And a real, real person would respect that. Um, but yeah, don't do it. Um, what if he only have only Instagram? How do I check if he's real? It depends on what he's telling you. If his Instagram has like, you know, five followers and he's following 300 women and he's like a military guy, then yeah, it's probably a fake. Um, I'm happy to look at the Instagram that you have in question. If you want to bring it to, to us, we'll take a look at it. But a lot of times Instagram, you know, if they have, you know, five posts, they're following 400 women and they have 20 followers. And let's say it's a military guy named James Johnson. But his 20 followers are young kids in Nigeria, then it's a fake. That's that's usually the best way to tell. Um, but when it comes down to it, it's it's what the person is telling you. What is their story? Are they a widow with one child and they're in the military? Or are they? That's how you can tell. Um, it's not so much the photos because they're, they're stealing photos of unknown people. It's not the photos. You know, it's not the. Um, the profile itself, it's what they're telling you. What are they asking of you? What's their story? Because scammers are stealing more and more photos of, of people that are unknown. And so they Google the photo as a victim and they say, well, the photo didn't come up in Google, so it must be real. No, it just means that they've stolen a photo of somebody that is, is not coming up. So, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways. Um, I've been asked for bank account, credit card. I say no one gets my personal information unless I'm married, period. Good. Don't open credit cards for people. Never do that. Never do that. Um, you know, normal people don't ask you to open credit cards. Just, just remember that. It doesn't happen that way. Scammers do. Scammers ask you to open credit cards. They ask you to open bank accounts. And that's that's just how they are. So red flags. That's the red flag. No matter what their photo tells you, no matter what, you, if they're asking you to open an account, don't do it. So, yeah, if you Google his photo and nothing comes up, that just means maybe that the scammer has stolen a photo that doesn't come up in Google. You know, if a scammer goes on social media and they find a profile of a, ga a guy named Tom who lives in Missouri and he's like a cashier at a Walmart, his photos are not going to come up in search because he he's not famous and it's not a known stolen photo and that's why it's happening. Um, and never give out your address because <laughs> nothing usually happens when you give out your address. I mean, they don't come to your house, but, you know, you give out your address and they um, – you know, they'll say, oh, I sent you a box, dear, but you have to pay the shipping. That's that's why they ask for your address generally. So don't don't ever give out your address to people. This comes down to, again, would you give out your address to a man you met in a bar? No. Don't do it on the Internet. That's, that's what it comes down to. I mean, you, you have to keep that in mind. Where do they find the time to do all this? Don't they have to also work and sleep? No. <laughs> so scammer, a lot of scammers are unemployed. So a lot of scammers don't work. Their job is to scam. Um, a lot of scammers are students. So you'll find a, a scammers that are like 17, 18 years old. They go to school. And then when they're not in school, they're scamming. And that's what they do. It is their job. Scamming is their job. Um, a lot of people have asked us, you know, why do they scam? Why don't they just go out and get a job? And it depends on where they're from. And I'm not, I'm not, people are going to take this wrong. I'm not defending scammers. I think what they do is wrong. Um, some of the scammers are in countries where there is no jobs. So what do they do? They go online and scam. I mean, the um, one of the parliament members or, or governors, something in Nigeria, or not Nigeria, in Ghana, um, one of their government officials had said, our youth are scamming, but I'd rather have them scamming and making money than wandering the streets. 
So, I mean, it, it comes down to where they're from, but, um, you know, they, they do it. They, they, it is their job. It's their full-time job. It really is. Um, but, and they never pay you back. So, you know, if they tell you they're going to pay you back. They never will. Poor English, desperate to run into relationships, no video chats, asking for money, fake IDs. What are the other red flags? Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's quite a bit of them, you know, um, they don't always ask for money, asking for gift cards. Um, you know, they're, they're ones that are pushy, you know, that are sitting there and their photos look weird or that you ask them to video chat. They say, no, they, you ask them for a photo of, you know, them sipping a cup of coffee, you know, and they can't do it. Um, you know, and a lot of them too, they don't always ask for money or gift cards. They may, you know, push the yes into love, but they may also say, I want to buy you a house and a car. Honey, go online and look at houses and cars. That's a red flag too, because I'm sorry. I, I No matter how much I like somebody on the internet, I'm not going to buy them a house or a car. I can't even buy myself a house or a car. So ones that are like throwing away, throwing out their money going, Hey, I'm a successful businessman and I want to buy you a house. Yeah, that's a scam. Um, People that have lots of money don't tend to do that. You know, they don't. So, uh, thank you, Maria. It's good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. And they do. They show, you know, UN agreements. They show all this kind of crazy stuff. And they show, you know, fake, fake documents all the time. It's very popular. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, through all this, if it doesn't sound right, if it doesn't sound right, if it doesn't um, make sense to you, if it's not something that sounds correct, then it's probably a scam. You know, before online dating, we used to meet people in bars and clubs, and you have to take your mindset back to that. When I used to be younger and I would meet people in a club, they wouldn't tell me these crazy stories. It's the same thing. If it sounds weird, it is. It definitely is. And there are Bitcoin scams on Instagram as well. Um you know, there, there's Bitcoin scams on Instagram and there's Bitcoin scams all over the place. Um, a lot of the money flipping scams, they'll say, you know, hey, if you have $300, I can turn it into $5,000. And it's a Bitcoin money flipping investment scams. Um, it comes down to money is you don't get money for nothing. You don't. You don't get money for nothing. You don't, you don't get, you know, money for sitting on your butt just going, okay, here's $500, turn it into 10000 It doesn't work that way. Life doesn't work that way. If life worked that way, I wouldn't be living where I'm living. I wouldn't be driving the car I drive. So it, it's it's absolutely a scam. Um, person said he was at JFK Customs. Why would they give you an apartment to send money to? <clears throat> the apartment is probably to a money mill. The apartment is probably to a victim. And so they're telling you, send the money to this, this apartment and, and, you know, they're going to help me get out of JFK Customs. It'll be a victim's ad address who's probably accepting packages or, or envelopes and not knowing where they're from um, and who's, who's a money mill. You know, and it comes down to two, look, I mean, I've traveled all around the world. I've been to a lot of countries. I've been through the, all the Balkans. I've been through Europe. I've been everywhere. Um, in my whole life of traveling, I've never gotten pulled aside by the police and arrested. I've never gotten stopped because of my passport or visa. I've gotten searched um, in certain countries because of just the nature of where I like. I've been to Kosovo and I've been to, you know, Bulgaria and places like that. And yes, I've been stopped and searched, but I've never been held. I've never been taxed. I've never had my luggage held. I've never had any of that happen to me. And so these scammers will travel and they'll say, oh, well, I was traveling through London Heathrow Airport and I got stopped for a tax on my luggage. Well, it doesn't work that way. And, it, you know, it just doesn't happen that way. So keep in mind their stories. Bye, little P scam baits. Good to see you. Uh, I'll check out, check you out later. Um, I had a scammer call me and told me we had his house surrounded and to come out with his hands up. He gasped and hung up the phone. <laughs> I I told a scammer one time that the the president of Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan, was coming to his house to arrest him. <laughs> he got scared. <laughs> Is giving your email address to someone online okay? Um, 
I would recommend not giving them your primary email address. And keep in mind, if someone asks you for your email address and you've just met on a site, it's likely a scammer. Um, what I do is I have an email address that I use for my work, for business, for personal family, friends. And then I have an email address that I use as like my garbage email where I give it to people I don't know who want to email me. But hey, here you go. I would set up a... a a second email just for online romance dating is what I would do just to be very, very careful with that. Don't give your personal email like you've used for, I've had the same email address for 21 years. I don't give that to people I've never met online. Uh, thank you for your kind words. I appreciate it. Yeah, there's voice changer apps on iPhones too. So back in the day, like back in the 90s, we had voice changers that were like little boxes and you would talk into them and it would sound like a, a robot. Now they have voice changer apps that actually sound pretty pretty decent. And so um, their scammers are using that as well. They're using it to, to, you know, male scammers are using it to call female victim or female, um, their fake profiles. So you have a male scammer who's pretending to be Esther Smith, who's a model in Nigeria who's trapped. They can use that app to sound like a female. And so that's very, very scary. Very scary. I've had a relationship with someone from the UK, never asked for money, but keeps on telling stories about having been stuck in London. How can I do a reverse image on the name? The name won't come up with anything because the name is fake. Um, you know, what? it comes down to what's their story. People don't get stuck in London. They don't need financial help because they're in London. So... If you're talking to somebody online and they're saying they're stuck and they need your help, it's a scam. There's something very, 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 very wrong with that. Um, if you have their information, you want to inbox it, scamming scammers at Gmail or Facebook scamming scammers action. Anna and myself will take a look. We're happy to do that. Happy to take a look. I had another scammer call me and tell me I could get a free pain relieving brace. He asked me where I had pain. I told him right now I have a pain in my ass. <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I had somebody call me the other day that's, um, <laughs> what was it? Oh, I, I qualified for a life alert bracelet. And I thought, well, I'm not that old, but I'm getting there. Uh, and it was a scam. They wanted my credit card. So, yeah, scammers come in all, all shapes and sizes. Wow. Scammed you at 65000 He still calls me wanting more. He says he loves me. I'm sorry to hear that, Pat. You need to block him. Don't answer his calls. Absolutely do not answer his calls because it is 100%. Um, he's going to try to manipulate you for more and more money. And, and it, you know, you don't want to fall for that. Don't, don't ever. I mean, that's a lot of money to be scammed out of. And, and you know, keeping in contact with him is even worse. So I would advise you to, to, to stop all communication with him for sure. Tammy, if I send you their phone numbers or his name, would you be able to know if he's real or fake? I can take a look at the phone numbers and call it and see who I get. And also, if you want to send me that and just send me um, what he's telling you, what his story is, photo if you have it, I can take a look. And and myself are happy to always take a look. So if you'd like to, please feel free to, and I will take a look at it. Um, but that being said, just just be patient with, with Anna and myself. We work the page as quickly as we can. Uh, with me being home and having absolutely nothing to do, I'm I'm on here quite a bit, but um, it does take time. We get you know sometimes 200 people in one night. Last night I had over 300 people in the inbox needing help. So um, send it. I'll definitely or Anne will take a look. I said we're both working the page together, so if you need help, we'll we'll take a look. Sure. So if you guys have any questions, if you want to ask them now, I'm going to end this Q and A because it's gone on for quite a long time, and my show is coming on, so I wanted to watch my show. <laughs> But um, I appreciate you guys coming out. I appreciate you guys, um, you know, coming to this Q&A. And, and if you want me to do more of them, I'm happy to do more of them. You just have to let me know. I kind of, I've had people tell me, no, I don't want you to do them. And I've had people tell me, please do them. So um, you can definitely let me know and I'll do, I'll do, I can do one once a week if you want, because I'm not working right now. Um, how can you tell if he's from the U.S. Air Force? Depends on the story he's telling you. Um, if you want to in, inbox, it's all to me. I can take a look for you. Um, if you need to get a hold of us, here we go. One more time. Scamming scammers at gmail.com. Or if you're on Facebook, you can go to Scamming Scammers Action, which is the name of the page. Click the message icon on Facebook, and it'll take you to our inbox where we can help you and we can um, sort through everything for you. Um, but I appreciate you guys coming out. I'm sorry if I missed any of your questions. As I, as I said, um, I can go ahead and, um, 
Anna and myself can help you in the inbox, and we'll go from there. But thanks again for everyone that came out. I really, really, really appreciate it. And again, please be patient with, with us, and especially when it comes to um, comments on YouTube. I get over a thousand comments easily a day on YouTube. I can't moderate all of them. I had a lady yell at me and say, you need to moderate your comments. I can't moderate all of them. Um, we get thousands and I try to weed out the ones that are racist. I try to weed out the ones that are nasty, but I can't get to all of them. So please, please understand that. I don't mean to be rude about it, but I'm doing my best. So thanks for coming out. Um, Anne says, hello. She's in um, the Facebook inbox if you need help as well. And we'll do another Q and a maybe next week. Cause I have nothing to do. So um, with that being said, stay safe, keep your distance from people, wash your hands, and, you know, stay healthy and, and just remember that while you might be healthy, you could get your grandma sick and kill her. So be very careful with, with this disease. And so I appreciate you guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. Be safe. And thank you. Thank you for being uh, part of the page. We appreciate it. Bye, guys. We'll see you later.